one difficult conversation is better than a bunch of conversations that avoid the truth. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we have our Mindful Monday segment, where we learn about how to handle difficult conversations through mindful listening. Enjoy. I'm going to share some strategies on how to deal with difficult conversations and why empathy and mindfulness are critical in cultivating meaningful and lasting relationships. Have you ever dreaded having a difficult conversation with someone before? Of course, we all have. We often procrastinate or even try to avoid needing to have difficult conversations altogether. A part of us thinks maybe, just maybe, things will resolve on its own. That we don't actually need to speak our truth or that the other person should just know how we feel and what we want. Of course, this typically doesn't happen, so we can feel anxious or maybe even start resenting the other person. Avoiding difficult conversations kills connection and intimacy because it doesn't allow for vulnerable and authentic relating. It's definitely been a struggle of mine, so in this video, I want to share a few tips that have helped me whenever I need to have challenging conversations with others. They've helped me to access the courage needed to even even have these conversations in the first place. And remember, these are skills to develop. They won't happen overnight, so don't get discouraged. Just like any skills, they will take practice and patience to develop. The first tip is to try to take some time and space to process your own emotions before going into a difficult conversation. For example, if you go into a conversation while you're angry, it's more than likely the other person will just become defensive and also get angry. Remember, a conversation is related in nature. It's not a one-sided affair. So the first step is always trying to create some space between your emotion and your response, which in this case is the conversation itself, rather than just reacting. From this space, you're much more likely to be able to approach the conversation from a heart-centered place rather than a fear-based place. When we're coming from the heart, we're much more likely to remain open and curious, whereas fear often makes us closed-minded and inflexible. It makes it hard for us to see another person's point of view or different possibilities of working through conflict or a difficult situation. My second tip is to try to have clarity around what you're hoping to achieve through this difficult conversation. Just the fact that it feels difficult means that you care and there's some stuck energy you're hoping to move. So having some clarity about what you ultimately want by having the end goal in mind will always make the process go that much more smoothly. And by clarity, I don't necessarily mean actions like how you want the other person to change or how you want them to act or behave. Remember, it's only a conversation if you remain open and curious. It's more about knowing what you want, how do you want to feel, how don't you want to feel, both during the conversation and afterwards. And then it's often helpful to know how you want the other person to feel and how you don't want them to feel both during and after the conversation. Having this awareness helps guide the conversation, whether consciously or not, because you've set the intention around the outcome you desire. My third and final tip after taking space and gaining clarity is about being fully present and actively listening while in the midst of the difficult conversation. I know this can be especially challenging for those that have trouble sitting with discomfort. It's easy for them to become easily distracted by their environment because the discomfort is just too unbearable. But try your best to be fully present, to make the other person feel like they have your undivided attention and that they They are the only person in the room. I feel this is the greatest gift you can give someone. And from this space is where you can actually employ empathy. To truly have a conversation, you must be able to understand where the other person is coming from. This requires listening mindfully and non-judgmentally and not interrupting or trying to talk over the other person, even if your own thoughts are screaming for attention or you just want to fix things. What is often helpful is to reflect back 
back what you're hearing from the other person and also to affirm and validate what they are saying. And that doesn't mean you have to agree with what they're saying, just that you hear what they are saying and that you acknowledge their right to experience whatever it is they are thinking or feeling. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, besides openness, curiosity is a key ingredient in moving through a difficult conversation. So learn to ask questions. Instead of just offering your opinions the whole time, try to ask questions to better understand the other person's perspective. Big picture wise, these skills allow us to better be able to step into another person's shoes so that we can understand where they're coming from and understand what fears they may be facing. It's only through mindful listening, empathy, curiosity, and the common goal of wanting a good relationship can we hope to genuinely connect with others and get through difficult conversations. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.